we all can say that violence is regrettable at best, deplorable, grotesque. Even the most hawkish just war theorist has to admit that justice, true justice, economic and political and social justice, reduces the need for war. And we can commit ourselves to that. But I want to get more in your face. Congratulations, you came to a talk. You're going to get your extra credit, don't worry. <laughs> Half the room just got up and walked out. <laughs> you, you came out. You learned a little bit. Maybe you'll watch that Frontline special on Islam this week. There's not, I don't know if there's one this week. You might take a book out of the library. You'll learn a little bit more. You go to church, synagogue, or mosque this week. You say your prayers. You pray for peace. Congratulations. You're a decent, kind human being. What have you done? What have you done for peace and justice this week? Do you really believe that war in Iraq is immoral? What have you done about it? You are a citizen of the most powerful military in the world, and it is a democracy. What have you been doing these last four or five years? What are you doing to prevent the next 9-11? How is your faith moving beyond feelings into actions? Because it's wonderful to sit at the television screen and lament the grotesque images that are portrayed there at the 6 o'clock news and to feel bad for the people in Sudan or Afghanistan or Iraq. But with great power comes great responsibility. To those that much has been given, much is to be expected. And all three of our faiths affirm that we will be held accountable by God Almighty on the day of our death for what we have done or not done to the least of our brothers and sisters. The Center for Jewish, Christian, and Muslim Relations loves this quote from Hans Kohn. We printed on it, we put it on everything. Porg has it tattooed on his body. Don't ask to see it. <laughs> it looked good when the center started, but it's starting to stretch a little. <laughs> Hans Kung, a Christian theologian, says, there will be no peace among the worlds, the nations without peace among the religions. There will be no peace among the religions without dialogue and cooperation among the religions. To which I would only humbly add, dialogue must begin with compassionate understanding and a willingness to listen to others. So let us listen to one another. Oh, sure. Okay, so the question is, um, you know, I, I talked about translating sentiments and feelings into actions, and this question of, well, how are we really supposed to do this? You know, I'm one citizen, I'm sitting in Casha Hall in North Andover, Massachusetts, and let me walk out the doors right now and end the war in Iraq. You can solve world hunger on the way out there too, that'd be really great. Um, that's a great question. 
Within the Christian tradition, there's this idea, it's called social sin. It's called institutionalized evil. Business as usual does harm to people because ordinary citizens like you and I choose to do nothing about it or are apathetic or feel powerless. Every great movement of social change in the history of humankind has begun because individuals like you have chosen to do something. Are you, do you go to Merrimack? What year are you? He's a freshman. Do you speak English? Do you speak, I'm serious, do you speak English? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, you got to, so, college educated, speaks English. Do you have any money in your possession? Not just here, but back in your room? A couple bucks, probably? Yeah. Did, did you eat today? Congratulations. You are now part of the top 1% of the world's population in terms of power. You have, you and I, by the way, you're a white man, too, so that, like, just, you just, <laughs> dude, you're, you're it. <laughs> um, you and I have more in common with Bill Gates than we do with the 98% bottom of the world's population. We are the filthy, stinking, rich, powerful of this world. <laughs> um, I mean, the great dupe is that you feel powerless. Um, history is full of people who have done something. And people say, what can I do? I mean, there's so many things. I say, pick the one thing you're most passionate about, the one thing that really sets a fire in your belly, and go do something. Maybe you'll go do the environment. And maybe you'll go advocate for women. Maybe you'll go advocate for children. And I'll talk about war. And you do poverty. And I'll do drinking water. And if each one of us does our own little bit, we move forward. And then as Dorothy Day, my, one of my heroes, always said, we're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful. Yes, way in the back. Okay, so the question is the difference. I, I, I clumped Iraq and Afghanistan together. When I said that before, I said the words were coming out of my mouth. I, I agree with you. I think there's a significant difference between those two places, um, especially initially in, with the 2000, in 2003 when we began in Afghanistan, but then moved the war on terror to the Iraqi front. Um, I mean, you can run it through the, you can run it through the, I'm a just war theorist, by the way. I, I, a very, what's called a very conservative just war theorist, which means I interpret the principles extremely tightly, um, to the point that I'm like a strategic pacifist. Um, you have to run the whole scenario through the just war thinking process. Do you have just cause, um, and probability of success, and as one of the one of the uh, the book I'm writing on right now is called post war it's on post war ethics, and that's about exit strategies and a commitment to a place in the long term. It's not enough just to roll across the border because you have just cause. You need to consider the long term implications um, and the larger historical context. Um, Afghan the history of Afghanistan goes back to the Soviet era and the defeat of the Soviets and our implied and explicit promise to the Afghani people. So is the, is the Taliban in power and rising in power in part because of the power vacuum that we helped, we, the United States, helped create? And uh, do we have moral responsibilities to help build the infrastructure and the economy and the education system and the healthcare system? I would say yes. I would say yes. So, so essentially, I think, I'm, I think I'm agreeing with you. I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask Hillary Clinton. I hear she's 